Hi everybody, Paul here, and I'm here with Manelia, Adelina, and Marsha. And we've got four animals that are really cool because you can find them right here in Illinois. So the first animal we're gonna talk about is Dakota, and Dakota is a red-tailed hawk. So these guys are the most common hawk in North America. They're all over the place. Um, you can find them here year-round, um, and then you can find them all the way from uh, California to Maine, all the way up to Canada, and then down to Mexico as well. So they're all over the place. You can find them in different areas with mountains and trees and, and plains areas. So they're very common and they're great to have around um, because they take care of a lot of different pest species. So animals that would otherwise be in your house or your garden, so rats and rabbits and things like that. So they're really neat and one of the reasons they're called, well the reason they're called a red-tailed hawk is this really cool red tail. So it's not really fire truck red, it's more brick red, uh, but it's the easiest way to tell these guys apart from some other hawks that you might find in this area, like the red-shouldered hawk or the broad-winged hawk. Um, they've also got this really neat little belly band. You might be able to see it. It's kind of dark feathers in between her legs, so it's kind of right in the chest when they're flying. Uh, most other hawks, they have do have markings on their chest, but they won't have that kind of really stark band. So they're really, really cool, and they're really, really useful, and they're really great to have around. Um, another neat adaptation, whoop, she got a little excited there, that they have is this little ridge above their eyes. So you can see she's got kind of a built-in shade, so when she's flying around out there, she can block out the sun, and she can see all the prey items on the ground um, without getting the glare in her eye. So the next animal we'll move on to is this really cool little guy that Manelia has. So this is Weasley, and he is an eastern screech owl, and he's talking to us a little bit. <laughs> I'm keeping Dakota far away, don't worry about that. Um, so screech owls you can find in this area, but a lot of times you don't even know they're there because obviously they are owls. So they're going to be asleep during the day most of the time. He knows kind of what our schedule is and that we deliver food during the day, so he wakes up for that. Um, but also they're so small and they camouflage so well. So there are two different um, phases or different colors of um, little screech owls that, that you can find. Usually, um, the, the phase that he is is called the red phase, and usually that one's found more in the south. Uh, up here, we tend to get the gray phase more often. Um, and again, they look just like tree bark when you put them up against a tree. They don't move much. They just sit there and do what we call perch and search. So they'll sit up in a tree until they see something fun, you know, just walking along, and then they'll swoop down and grab them. So these guys have a really varied diet. They'll eat all sorts of little small mammals. They'll eat little birds. They'll eat crayfish. They'll eat insects. So they're very adaptable. Um, and as I said, you can find them in this area. You can find them basically anywhere east of the Rockies. So there's a western screech owl that you can find on the other side of the country, uh, but that mountain range, range pretty much divides the two. Can you talk about what's going on with his eyelids? <laughs> so he's just blinking a little bit. He's got uh, an, what's, what we call a nictitating membrane. So that's his third eyelid. So I don't know if he's got something in his eye or he's just a little bit nervous. Um, so he's got the regular eyelids that we have, but then he has another one that comes across um, the opposite direction, so just kind of horizontally across. Um, and the reason for that is they can blink, but they can still see. So if there's a prey item they're going after, they can protect their eyes, but they still have some visibility there. Cool. All right, so we can turn it over to Adelina, who can talk about our scaled friends. So over here, <laughs> we have our very beautiful, ornate box turtle. Her name is Wichita. She is a uh, found definitely in Illinois. Um, she is listed as threatened in Illinois nowadays, so it is illegal to have them as a pet. Um, you would need a permit if you had one in Illinois. Um, back then, there was a time where you would find the ornate box turtle in all 102 counties in Illinois, but currently you just find her, um, find the ornate box turtle in just 10 counties. And so there's actually a pretty interesting study that Brookfield Zoo participates with uh, along with U of I. It's one of the longest uh, box turtle studies. It's been running for 15 years. And they actually do um, a capture study and they study the box turtles, uh, the ornate box turtles, and they'll do the eastern box turtle too because you do find that one in Illinois as well. Um, so that study is in Illinois and they'll count the box turtles in uh, the first few weeks of May um, and then just um, re-release them, but they'll do blood tests, they'll um, do like a health exam and such. Uh, but the really cool thing about the study is the way that they actually use what, what we do to capture them. 
So, um, and one of our vets is actually involved in that study very closely, um, but they actually use a type of dog to search for the box turtle. So it's a Boykin uh, Spaniel, and they are actually trained to sniff out the box turtle. So since these guys are native to here, they live in the grassy land. So like the grassland areas, the prairies, so the grasses are pretty tall. So if uh, you and me were trying to look for one, we would probably just walk right back by it. We would never see it. These guys like to burrow under the ground uh, to stay cool. Um, they'll actually also hibernate underground too. Uh, but the dogs can find them very easily. So I think within an hour, they average about two and a half box turtles that they find. Um, but they're pretty neat. So they actually um, are omnivores as well. So they like to eat a combination of um, veggies that they find and uh, they love bugs. So one of their favorites is actually um, earthworms. But here we'll give her veggie, the chopped veggies, earthworms, mealworms. Um, so yeah, she has a pretty healthy diet. Um, Wichita here is about 11 years old. She might be a little older than that. Uh, she actually came as a confiscation from US uh, Fish and Wildlife and came to the zoo with her sister Topeka. She's been here for a while, but she's a great ambassador animal and teaches people on how to conserve um, box turtles, especially ornate box turtles. But she's pretty neat. Does she have sharp, sharp claws? Well, they are definitely pretty sharp. Um, you can see she uses them a lot for walking, so she'll naturally um, wear them down. In her enclosure, we keep like different types of substrates. We keep like moss and rocks and uh, wood chips so that she'll naturally be sh uh, sharpening them down as she's walking. But she'll need them to, uh, she opportunistically eats and finds those bugs. So she's not like a hunter, but if she's walking around and she sees a bug, she'll uh, chomp on it. And so she'll use those claws too to like kind of move the vegetation around and to actually be able to dig when it's time for her to hibernate or to be you know, burrowing underground when it's too hot. But yeah, she's she's pretty neat. Are, are eastern box turtles bigger? They are a little bigger, yeah. Little eastern box bigger. turtles are bigger. The ornates are a little bit on the smaller side. And we also have, our next animal here is a corn snake. We have topaz here. So now corn snakes are native to the US. They're found on the eastern, uh, like New Jersey, Florida. They're very common in Florida. And you do find them in um, some parts of Kentucky as well. Um, in Illinois, you find more of a, the darker rat snake. So corn snakes are a type of rat snake, um, but not all rat snakes are corn snakes. But the corn snake here got its name because they think, uh, if you look at the underbelly, if Marsha shows us a little bit, kind of looks like the little grains of the corn there. Uh, with a different color so that's one of the reasons why she got her name they got their name as the corn snake but there it's one of the most popular snakes in the pet trade now you get different uh, color morphs now uh, but she has one of like the natural colors that you would find um, i think it's called like the carolina phase uh, but you find them in carolina in uh, florida and so just like all snakes her favorite foods to eat are mice so she will live um, in like abandoned barns, abandoned buildings, um, cornfields, because there's a lot of mice there to eat too. Um, and they eat their food whole. So she'll swallow her food whole. She actually unhinges her jaw to be able to eat that mouse. And she can eat mice that are um, just kind of as thick as her body, maybe even sometimes a little bit bigger too. But she'll eat every once every two weeks. So she doesn't have to eat very often. All snakes will do that. If they're very little, they'll eat more often. Sometimes they'll eat just like a couple times a week. Um, when they're pretty little, um, they actually will eat even lizards, bugs, pinkies, baby mice. Um, at this age, Topaz is, is eating like the bigger, large mice. Topaz is about 16, 17 years old. And actually a few years ago, she actually had some babies. And so we have some um, younger corn snakes that are actually her descendants. A lot of them look just like her. How big are the corn snakes when they hatch? When they hatch, they're about 12 inches. Um, and so now full grown, she'll, um, they can be up to between four to five and a half feet. Oh, wow. Um, and so snakes do grow the rest of their lives, but uh, corn snakes uh, tend to max out around five and a half feet, uh, six feet max. So they're not, they're kind of on the smaller side of the rat snakes. Yeah, these are our 
very cool animals. Do you guys have any questions? No questions? Okay. Alright, well thank you guys so much for tuning in and as always thank you for supporting Brookfield Zoo. We'll see you next time.